Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. It's a great joy to be together with uh, each one of us this morning um, and to be able to connect to the mentoring hour. So let's pray and uh, then we'll get started. Uh, I will introduce today's subject and uh, trusting God that we'll have uh, an enriching experience. So I want to request uh, one of us to please go ahead and lead in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for the mentoring hour that we are about to have, Jesus. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you will speak with us. Uh, you will help us to understand the deepest truth in the Bible. You will help us to open our uh, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, spiritual mind, and listen to the word uh, and to be equipped in every way possible, Jesus. We thank you for Pastor Nancy, and I thank you for everyone who has joined today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. I'll go ahead and uh, share the screen. Today, we will talk on the subject of uh, anointing. And um, uh, yeah, feel free to pose your questions right after that, and we'll do our best to answer it. Uh, so let's go ahead. I hope that uh, you can all see this presentation. So the anointing is uh, a subject that all of us are uh, curious about and interested in and would like to know uh, more about you know, how God really gives us that anointing and how we can work through the anointing of God in our lives. So uh, we'll try to understand what the anointing is from scripture. So when we consider the word anoint, uh, there are two Greek words from the New Testament that we can consider. One is uh, creo, the other one is alfio, both of which mean to anoint. And what we um, recognize from these words is that it means to smear or rub with oil. So to be rubbing with oil over something is what we call as uh, to anoint. And we see a practice of anointing in the Old Testament where people used this practice of anointing to consecrate someone for a particular office uh, or for some form of religious service. So that is how the anointing was done and that is why the anointing was generally done. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, the, a person would be anointed to signify that they have uh, been blessed and called uh, with a purpose. So we find that generally there were people who were anointed as uh, kings, there were people who were anointed as prophets, there were people who were anointed as uh, priests, and uh, the oil that we see uh, you know, used in the Old Testament, we understand that it represents the Holy Spirit. And uh, people would be anointed, uh, or as we said earlier, consecrated for a special purpose. And that is why they were anointed. So as we consider us, you know, those who are believers filled with the uh, Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, and uh, we who are now under the new covenant, um, we no longer see that God only chooses a few people to anoint them for his work. Uh, but under the new covenant, we all know that as believers, all of us carry the Holy Spirit. And uh, all of us have the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in each one of us. And uh, as we look at the New Testament scriptures, we recognize that there is something known as the anointing within and the anointing upon. So usually, uh, this term anointing, uh, we, we saw the actual meaning of that. Uh, but we also know that the anointing is alternatively used for the Holy Spirit as well. So uh, Apostle John in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20, 
he says but you have an anointing from the holy one and you know all things and uh, in verse 27 he says but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you so he's referring to the presence of the holy spirit that every believer receives at the point of being born again so the anointing is the presence of the holy spirit that every believer carries now this we understand uh, however the new testament also refers to the endowment of the power of god by the holy spirit which is known as the anointing upon we uh, call it the uh, anointing upon we see that jesus in luke chapter 4 and verse 18 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me so Jesus was saying that he was anointed or there was uh, the, the spirit of God upon him or the power of the Holy Spirit upon him, which enabled him to do the good works that he did. And uh, so here we, we see that the anointing is required upon us to do the works of God the way Jesus did the works that the Father called him to do. And uh, Jesus states that, you know, the anointing on his life was meant to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, to bring about healing of the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind and set at liberty those who are oppressed. So the works of God, um, and we can summarize this as uh, preaching the word of salvation, uh, seeing miracles take place, healings, deliverances, God's intervention in people's lives. Uh, and that is the kind of work that Jesus did by the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. So the Holy Spirit within us dwells in every believer and there's also the endowment of power upon us which enables us or which empowers us to do the works that god calls us to do so what is the significance of the anointing you now the anointing as we've seen we have it within and upon so the anointing within refers to the work of the holy spirit um, the ministry of the holy spirit and uh, we, we know that in every believer's life, you know, the Holy Spirit leads, he um, transforms, uh, and he does his work in that manner. Now, uh, the anointing upon that we also talked about just now is an empowering that enables us to do the works of God, uh, more specifically the supernatural works of God that we enlisted. So the anointing the necessity for anointing in every believer's life is so that we have an impartation of the ability of god uh, in us to do god's work okay so what does the anointing do uh, we've seen that in the life of jesus and very similarly uh, when jesus said he was anointed by the holy spirit uh, he was able to function in um, you know, in his call, he was able to do the supernatural works and we too will be able to do those same works uh, and in align to the call of God on our lives. So whatever it is that God wants us to do, we can do it by his empowering and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to do those works. And that is why each of us uh, as believers, no matter which walk of life we are in, you know, we may be... Um, part of uh, uh, the ministry very directly uh, the fivefold ministry offices or you know within the church or we could be called in the marketplace but wherever we are we can depend on the power of the holy spirit to enable us to do the supernatural works that god wants us to do and fulfill his call and that is why this eagerness to know more about the anointing and to grow in the anointing so when do we receive the anointing to uh, fulfill God's call and to fulfill this ministry that God has for us. Uh, as we stated, we need the anointing upon and we do know that the anointing upon 
comes when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, what uh, Jesus spoke about in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. So, you know, that is uh, the initiation of that anointing upon. And from then on, as um, uh, good stewards, we, we need to engage with that anointing and also cause that anointing to increase upon our lives. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about how to increase the anointing of God on our lives. Um, I've taken uh, most of the content from our APC resources. So uh, those of us who are in Bible college, you, you probably have heard uh, these aspects in some or the other course as well. So how do we increase in the anointing of God on our lives? Firstly, to align ourselves to the grace and the gift of God on our lives is very helpful because we recognize that uh, God calls us to minister in accordance to the gift of grace that has been given to each one of us. And uh, so each of us has a grace upon our lives. And uh, there is a grace according to the measure of Christ. So a portion of grace has been given to each of us. And so the things that we can do, the abilities that we have, um, are, are all different, but they are according to what God has uh, given to us or God has entrusted us with. So it's important for us to recognize the grace of God on our lives. And uh, when we recognize God's grace on our lives and we engage in doing more of uh, what that grace enables us to do, we see that there is an anointing on that um, activity or on that ministry. For example, if uh, someone is called to administration, we see that if they have the grace of administration, we find that you know, their ability to do things is significantly more greater and you know so much more blessed by God than um, if they were to do something else that they are not called to do. Maybe uh, let's say, you know, if they're not called to lead worship, but if they're called to uh, administer, we see that they have a greater anointing on that administrative ability that God has given them. And similarly, if someone is called to something else, such as worship, we may find that they are more anointed to lead people in worship as compared to, uh, you know, any other task that they don't have, uh, you know, much of the grace of God in that task. So here is one key, and that key is to identify what we are called for, step into that, and... Uh, as uh, Peter exhorts the believers, he says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can grow in the grace and growing in that grace, growing in that ability will enable us to see more of God's anointing flow uh, in and through that ministry or that work that God is calling us to do. So that is one, one uh, very uh, important thing that we can remember. So to grow in the grace and the gift of God on our lives. Now, what are some of the other things that we can uh, consider in order to grow in the anointing? Uh, the second one is to increase in the word or to um, spend more time in the word, to give more attention to the word, to engage in the word of God more intently and strongly. The reason being uh, the word of God, as Jesus spoke about it, he said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. So there is uh, the power of, of God in his word and uh, there is the life of God in his word. Uh, and therefore, as we engage in more of the word, we begin to see that, you know, we, um, we are able to grow further in the ability uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit, or in other words, the anointing of God. So the word itself carries the anointing, uh, and which is why engaging in the word, believing the word, and you know, declaring the word, speaking the word, living the word, all of that increases the anointing on our lives. Uh, the next uh, important thing that helps us is uh, consecration. Consecration simply means to set apart our lives for the Lord. So when we uh, when we uh, commit ourselves to the Lord, we commit to holiness, when we commit to, um, uh, you know, uh, 
giving ourselves more to the lord in fact we're supposed to give all of us all of ourselves to the lord but you know as we rise in our commitment uh, in our journey we see that the more the consecration the greater the anointing of god on our lives so consecration is another important thing that increases the anointing of god on our lives uh, then of course there is what we call as impartation and impartation simply refers to uh, the uh, anointing that can be put on our lives um, you know uh, which which can come either through association with um, uh, with the ministers of god uh, it, it can come uh, you know uh, through serving together or as i said association so impartation can come through transfer uh, through from a particular ministry or a, a person but again when it comes to impartation uh, we need to remember that the impartation will uh, only happen in parts uh, and uh, we we really do not see that you know god uh, transfers the entire whatever uh, kind of anointing a particular minister carries in, in entirety you know that shifts on to uh, another person uh, it does not really work like that so uh, in a uh, measure the impartation happens and the impartation also happens aligned to the call of um, different ones of us so uh, these are some things for us to remember so in a gist you know uh, we talked about what the anointing is why the anointing is so significant why we must look for the anointing upon our lives and the fact that we can grow in the anointing of god we can grow in the ability that god gives us to minister and to serve others so very briefly here um, uh, we've shared some thoughts on the anointing but at this point we'll just open up this time for us to ask questions anything related to the anointing uh, please feel free to ask and uh, you know our faculty is on this call and we'll do our best to address uh, the questions that may come up So though we have a particular yes please go ahead brad uh, uh, good morning pastor nancy good morning yes i have this question um, when we talk of anointing is there any difference between anointing calling and um, grace because it's kind of like confusing so i don't know if you can throw more light on the difference between a grace because i hear people sometimes talk of um, um, I have a pastoral anointing or I have a pastoral grace. Some say I know I have, a, I have an apostolic calling, but I have um, a teaching grace. So all this is really confusing. So I don't know if you can like um, explain some more. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Pratt, for that question. So uh, I'll share from my understanding. So when we say the anointing as i already stated it has to do with the the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit that gives us the ability to serve um, and to minister so that is the anointing so it uh, is the power of the holy spirit the power and presence of the holy spirit when we talk about grace of god grace of god is also ability um, that is also the empowerment of god which is given to us uh, but you know uh, uh, the distinction would be that the grace of god is an ability that god gives but anointing more specifically empowered by the holy spirit uh, and when we talk about the call of god call of god um, is uh you know like a a, a specific um if, if you may call it uh, a ministry intended that God has for individuals. So uh, that's as much as I can understand. Uh, Prat, I'll just request our uh, faculty here to also add to it. So if there's anything more that our faculty want to add. So the diff Prat is asking for the difference between the anointing, uh, he grace, and uh, call of God on our lives.
So I can see Pastor Jay Kumar. So I'd like to request Pastor Jay Kumar to share. Sure, sure. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you so much. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, just a, just a few thoughts on the call of God. Call of God is an, actually an invitation, invitation and an opportunity um, that God prepares for us to minister to His people. Right. So each individual, you know, there's a specific call, um, people, place, um, and so on. The way in which we do it, and um, it could be um, well in the fivefold ministry, as we see in Ephesians four. Or it could be uh, any other uh, way that uh, it could be an overlap of one or two, you know, the fivefold ministry. Um, or it could be uh, any other gift that we see in, uh, in the body, that we are placed in the body, like Romans 12 um, talks about that. So, so that is the call. It's an invitation, an opportunity, and an avenue through which God releases uh, his plans and purposes through the individual to minister to either the body or, you know, uh, people outside. So that is the thing. But when when we pursue the call of God, there is the anointing. Um, so we talk about the power and presence of God to fulfill that call. So there is the, we are anointed, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill um, the call of God. So that is that would be the distinction between the call and the anointing. So call is an invitation, anointing is the empowerment. And when we talk about the grace of God or the grace gifts of God, this is also, you know, there's an overlap. It is, yes, definitely we are anointed, but we are also, uh, this is for, you know, we see that it is for every believer. We see that, um, you know, every believer uh, has, um, uh, can pursue uh, love and desire spiritual gifts. That's the exhortation. So every believer has, um, uh, uh, has been exhorted to do that. So these spiritual gifts or the gifts of grace are for uh, every believer. So that is another distinction that the, all believers can pursue and desire the gifts of grace uh, to be operational in our lives. And the call of God is a specific area. Um, we need not compare with others. It could be very distinctive in, uh, from others. Um, and the anointing is the empowerment to fulfill that call. I hope that helps. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing your thoughts. And uh, Pratt, I hope that that clarifies the distinction between the words. And Pastor, thank you also for uh, uh, mentioning that to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now that all of us can do that. All of us have that grace. Uh, all of us can um, tap into that grace, and all of us can operate in that grace. So, thank you for uh, you know, uh, especially clarifying that point. I uh, will move on to the next question here by Jeffina, and she says, uh, "We, you said we can grow in our anointing. Is there any biblical life example of someone who grew in the anointing?" Okay, all right. So uh, I would, I mean, I can think of uh, Philip right now in the book of Acts. Uh, we know that he had a ministry of evangelism and we, we know he had a call of God on his life for sure. Uh, however, we, we don't really see him, uh, you know, operating, uh, he he's doing his best, but then we don't see him being called as an evangelist initially when he's ministering in Samaria, and then you know you have these other uh, incidents when he is um, ministering to the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, and we know that you know he's doing his his work and he is functioning in the call of God. Uh, but my understanding is that uh, he was he was growing in that grace and anointing that God had given him uh, to the point uh, that. At one towards the end of the book of Acts, we see that he's called as an evangelist. Did the call already exist on his life? Yes, of course, because the Bible teaches us um, that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So the call of God already existed upon his life, but um, uh, you know he would have emerged stronger in that anointing, and it would have probably become more obvious, uh, which is why people also started calling him Philip the Evangelist towards the end of the book of Acts. So that is one example that uh, I can uh, think of. Uh, does that uh, help, Jafina? 
okay thank you thank you so much and uh, also you know was just thinking about the old testament and um, uh, as we consider the prophets who were under training uh, like if we take elisha okay for for example we we find that he was uh, in training under elijah and um, when elijah was serving we don't really see elisha ministering but eventually we see that uh, he emerged with a uh, a powerful anointing on his life in fact the bible is very clear that uh, there was a double portion of the anointing of god upon elisha's life so there are measures of anointing and which is why we are saying it can increase uh, as we pursue the call of god over our lives yeah. thank you jafina thank you for that question um Vinay, uh, Prince Vinaydeep has a question. He says, so he said, grow in the anointing. So is there a possibility to lose anointing also? Since we can grow in the anointing, can we also ask and desire for anointing in specific areas we desire? Okay, so there are two questions. The first one that Prince, uh, first question that Prince is asking is, is there a possibility to lose the anointing? lose the anointing um yes prince we when when we do not function in the grace of god for our lives uh, and the gift of god we could say that uh, the the grace and the gift they become inert and you know the holy spirit uh, even though god would like to anoint us uh, there's really nothing much that can actually happen through our lives and so in that sense yes we don't see that anointing functioning through our lives um, and i'll open up the first question to our faculty as well so very specifically prince is asking can we lose the anointing on our lives would uh, any of us want to respond to that question? Okay, uh, if I may ask Pastor Ashish. Um, sorry, Nancy, I joined late, so oh, okay. I'm trying to no snap problem, Pastor. Um, okay, I can ask the question again, the Pastor. Question? So the question is, uh, when we began this morning, we shared that we can grow in the anointing of God. So the question is, is there a possibility to lose the anointing also? Um, so the anointing can increase or decrease. That is the, the level of what we carry upon our lives can increase or decrease. Um, because you know we see in scripture, uh, there are different degrees of anointing. Right. So, examples quickly, uh, Elijah and Elisha, there was a double portion. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, John 3, 34, that God does not give the spirit by measure. It means that there are, you know, there, there are measures and there's, there's, there's so much more. So the level of anointing can increase or decrease. But uh, for, for those of us who are called, uh, I mean, those of us who are believers, we're not, going to, we're not going to lose the anointing in the sense that the anointing always abides with us. Jesus said that in John 16. Uh, he is with you and he will be in you. He will be in you forever. The presence of the Holy Spirit for a believer is with us always. Uh, Romans 11, 29, the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. So along with the gifts and the calling, there obviously has to be the anointing for the gifts and the calling to operate. So uh, based on this, we can see the anointing is never lost as, as long as we are walking with God but uh, the level of anointing can vary now can a believer uh, this you know come to a place where they are I mean they totally lose their faith and the anointing yeah that's possible Hebrews 6 but um, yeah that's a totally different condition totally different state in which a believer is but in general if somebody's walking with God you're continuing in faith you're not going to lose the anointing. Uh, the level of anointing can vary. Also, the dimensions. You know, like we operate in different kinds of anointing. So, 
there may be a season and you're moving more in an apostolic grace. There's maybe a season you're moving more in a prophetic grace or teaching grace and so on. So the kinds of anointing operating in different seasons will vary. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's just a big summary. Uh, thank you, Pastor. And uh, Prince, I hope it answers your first question. The second question that Prince is asking is, since we can grow in the anointing, can we also ask and desire for anointing in specific areas we desire? So we can do that. We can desire uh, the anointing of God to increase in specific areas. But as we stated earlier, uh, it will only increase in the areas where we have the grace uh, and you know the, uh, the the grace to do those things. So if we desire to do something that we are not, we don't have the grace to do, uh, we will not see the anointing of God, you know, uh, or the mighty anointing of God the way we want on that particular uh, ability. So I just wanted to share that. Uh, but if anyone else wants to add to that, please feel free to. Prince, I hope that uh, it answers your question. If there's a follow-up question, you may please ask. OK, thank you. Thank you, Prince. So there's any other things about the anointing that you've been wondering about? Please feel free to either unmute and ask, or you may also post your question in the chat. Okay, so um, since we're talking about the grace and the gift of God and the connection to the anointing, I was just thinking about how important it is for uh, each of us to identify that, um, you know, as to what it is that God has called us for and uh, to also discover uh, the, the skills, the desires uh, that God has put in our hearts and, and to understand the way we are built um, and you know to to as the apc publication you know fulfilling god's purpose for your life even there we talk about how we discern what god has really called us for and that's such an important aspect uh, for us to to see the anointing of god uh, flow in and through our lives So any other comments? Yes, yes, uh, Sam, please go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, uh, also, I'm not sure, like in one of the slides, I think you had mentioned the anointing um, comes at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is it? Or, mm -hmm. But what yeah. about the indwelling, right, of the Holy Spirit? That is when you put your faith in Jesus. Yes. Yes. Or sure. are you saying that the baptism is an enhancer or an increase? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Sam. So I just want to clarify. So before that slide, uh, we spoke about the anointing within that every believer has. So when we are born again, we have the we receive the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so the anointing is already in us. So that is the first time that we receive the anointing or the initiation. Uh, but then when we speak about the anointing upon, uh, where we said that the anointing upon is the power of the Holy Spirit for us to do 
the works of God and the supernatural works of God. Now, that ability comes when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So the anointing upon, um, we, we see that, you know, we, we begin to move in the supernatural when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I, I hope uh, that clarifies it. Oh, if there's any follow-up question, please do ask. You're muted, uh, Sam, in cases. Oh, yeah. So Sam has posted in the chat, and he says, yes, thank you. Great question. Yes, I think. Uh, All right. Uh, Molly on the chat asks, I just wanted to know if there are any particular notes or video which we can read or hear. So in our APC resources, uh, I'm sure you know, you'll find uh, a lot of content on the anointing, Molly. So you could uh, uh, just do a search and uh, that would help you. Um, but Apart from that, we also have um, a specific course in our second year, which is um, Keys to Supernatural Ministry, where we do talk about the anointing and many other aspects that uh, help us to flow in the supernatural. So in that course, we will deal with uh, the anointing in depth. I hope that is helpful, Molly. Please let us know. Okay, uh, so Sam, okay, sure, thank you. Sam says, Pastor, could you also speak about laying of hands as a form of anointing and its significance, like in the letter to Timothy by Paul? Okay, so laying on of hands um, is as we, we talked a little bit about impartation, and so it would come under. Uh, that category of the transfer of the anointing. So when you know Paul talks about it, um, and you know he uh, talks about laying hands over Timothy, uh, that's what it refers to. So the transfer or the impartation of uh, the the power of God on Timothy's life. But I think I'll request Pastor Ashish if uh, he could elaborate on this: the laying on of hands as a form of anointing. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, we see in scripture um, that um, God, so the uh, uh, anointing comes from God, right? So uh, it's not uh, a human, man is, no man is administering the anointing. The anointing simply is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit operating through us, right? And the anointing comes from God. The anointing is God, the Holy Spirit upon us. But what we do see in scripture is that God uses human agency uh, to either activate, uh, to impart uh, more of the anointing, more of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. We see it in both Old and New Testaments, um, especially, for example, in the Old Testament, you know, uh, they would anoint somebody with oil physically and the Holy Spirit would come upon them. Uh, 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 example would be when Samuel went to anoint David, right? he poured oil, uh, a, a physical act, but it was God saying, you're anointed, the Holy Spirit's going to work in and through your life, and so on. And so also in the New Testament, we find a similar thing where God uses the laying on of hands as one of the ways, not the only way, but one of the ways uh, to impart the anointing. You know, the, the anointing can be released for many, many reasons. One, one is obviously for, for towards ministry, right? So when Paul and the elders laid hands on Timothy, uh, there was prophecy, there was impartation of gifts. Um, and, and, uh, and so that happened. First Timothy 4.14, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, right? So there was that 
anointing in relation to ministry. But the anointing can also be released uh, for other things, example, to heal, to deliver. It's the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit being transmitted for healing, for deliverance. So you lay hands on the sick, the anointing destroys the yoke. Or the anointing can also be transferred to cloth uh, in that in that in that case. Uh, you know, in Acts 19, 11, when Paul laid hands on handkerchiefs and they, that carried the anointing to uh, heal and deliver people. So, uh, so to, in summary, God uses human agency to impart, transfer the anointing uh, for various reasons. It could be for ministry, uh, it could be for healing, deliverance, and so on. But laying on of hands is only one of the ways, not the only way uh, through which uh, this can happen. Right? The anointing can also be imparted through association by you walking with somebody. Uh, the anointing can also be imparted during the ministry of the word. Uh, you know, uh, in Luke 5, 17, Jesus is teaching, and then the power of the Lord is present to heal. So while the word is being proclaimed, the anointing is also accompanying the proclamation of the word of God. So there are many different ways through which the anointing can be imparted uh, for activation ministry or for healing or other purposes. I hope that someone raises Thank you, Pastor. And Sam, we hope it addresses your question. If you have any follow up questions, uh, you could please unmute and ask. Um, yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Pastor, also just a little bit about um, so, uh, so the, you know, there is, there is almost like a responsibility. Um, I guess to prophets or to elders to, you know, lay hands and, and be <clears throat> like the agencies or the vehicles to initiate, activate, uh, anoint, uh, anointment or, or the presence of Holy Spirit in others. Uh, but also I'm thinking on the other side, uh, as, a, as a receiver, um, you know, as someone who is, um, who is receiving anoint, anointing externally, especially, you know, um, so the role so one is obviously uh you know um, if i am someone who is receiving or or participating in such to align my heart and my you know to 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 be sensitive to god's calling and presence but also but also i think just i i i'm I, um, probably it's uh uh how do how does one um safeguard or avoid uh, something I, I, because it's uh, I, I think it's two people coming together and and also asking God's presence. But um, you know what what would go like? I'm just thinking if there's anything that would go wrong in that. Uh, I don't know if there's a scripture of like not being too quick on laying of hands. Uh, so either you know either the anointer or the one who is receiving anointing is not ready. Um, and how do we avoid um, or or any any thoughts on that? Okay. Pastor, please. You could, oh, okay. yeah. 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 So, um, so the, what's the person whom God is using to impart and the person who is expecting to receive both have responsibility, like you correctly said. So, um, so talking about this whole thing, on the, on the side of the recipient, there has to be hunger. That means we have to be desiring, we have to be hungry. Yes, God can work in spite of it or apart from it because he is sovereign. But the normal process is the recipient also has to be desiring. The Bible teaches us to covet spiritual things. Uh, the Bible teaches us that you know we are blessed when we hunger and thirst for the things of righteousness. Uh, the person who is the recipient should also be sowing to the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 6, 9, uh, 7, 8, 9. Uh, if the recipient is sowing to the flesh, but then coming in to saying, I want the spirit, it's not going to work, right? The law is you sow to the spirit if you want to reap, from, reap off the spirit. So that's a responsibility of the recipient. So that's that's important that we, we are posturing ourselves correctly uh, in order to both impart and in order to receive. Uh, what, you know, what I see, uh, you know, I think all of us would observe 
uh, 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 where we go wrong is presumption. Uh, presumption can happen in both ways. You know, the person ministering can be presumptuous, you know, and, and, and this happens often. Uh, they say, you know, oh, the Lord is going to make you a great apostle or the God, God is going to, you know, make you a great prophet. Or, and, and all of those words are being spoken presumptuously uh, uh, very often just to, you know, make the other person feel good or make everything look nice in front of the audience. But none of that is going to matter. It all depends on the call of God on that individual, right? So I can lay hands on somebody. If God has called that person to be an evangelist, and I can prophesy till the sun goes down, saying you're going to be a great prophet and you're receiving prophetic anointing, but those words are empty because it's not aligned to the call of God on that person. Those words are presumptuous words, right? I can say, oh, there's a mighty prophetic anointing coming on you. There'll be zero prophetic anointing coming because the call of God on that person is to be an evangelist, right? So that's presumption on the, pers on the side of the person ministering. Similarly, presumption on the side of the person receiving, right? Uh, reception always happens aligned to the call of God on that individual's life. I cannot give something I do not have. I cannot give something that's outside the plan and purpose of God for the individual. The same thing on the side of the person receiving. Uh, we only receive aligned to the call and purpose of God. So presumption happens there as well, you know, where the people, person thinks, oh, I'm going to, you know, that person ministering is a prophet. Therefore, I'm going to, he laid hands on me or she laid hands on me. Therefore, I became a prophet. That's presumption. A prophet can lay hands on you to activate prophetic, the prophetic elements in your life, but the operation of the prophetic will still be aligned to the call of God on your life. So if you're called to be a worshiper, worship musician, the prophetic will express itself in that way, uh, in the prophetic dimension. Or if you're called to be a pastor, the prophetic will express itself in the pastoral gifting. Or the prophetic may express itself in the evangelistic gift, depending on the call of God. Right? So that's where the, the, the presumption happens. And so that's where we have to be careful. Uh, remember, anointing follows grace, gift, and call. Like what does God call? What is the call of God on our life? The anointing flows all along with, in line with all things. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. And so, so there was a lot of takeaways. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, we've almost come to the end of uh, our mentoring hour. Okay, so Sam also says, great notes, Pastor. The recipient hungers and covets for the anointing and maintains correct posture to receive anointing. Avoiding assumptions by both the anointer uh, and receiver during anointing should be a good practice. The call of God is the most important thing. Reception always happens in alignment with the call and purpose of God. Anointing follows grace, gifts, and the call of God. So thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sam, for summarizing what we just discussed. And um, actually, that word anointer, that uh, kind of, I was like, earlier, we had talked about this. And I think Pastor Ashish also mentioned that the though anointing is carried through human agents, ultimately, the anointing comes from the Lord. So I don't know if we can call the human agent as the anointer. But yes, we get the point. Uh, thank you once again, everyone. We'll wrap up at this point. Uh, I request uh, one of us to please go ahead and lead in prayer before we close. Yes, Daniel, please go ahead. Amen. God and Father, we should thank you. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for yet another time. I will pray that you will continue to help us to understand your word. Thank you for this wonderful session of studying your word. We pray that you will empower us. You will continue to strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your name be praised. Let your name be exalted. Father, we have studied your word. We pray this hour that, Lord, who will not only be here of your word, but will be practical doer of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you this hour. 
We bless you. We pray that you will prepare us for the next session in the name of Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. We give you praise. We honor your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Man, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you so much, Daniel. Mm. And uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, God thank bless you. you. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, have a wonderful day. And even as we have the uh, Good Friday Easter services, you know, be blessed. And uh, we pray that you, you will uh, draw closer to the Lord and have a very blessed time. So we wrap up right here. And we'll connect again next week, next Thursday. Bye for now.